what is going on guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be taking a look at adventuring's like own situation and for those of you who are planning on summoning for adventuring uh good news is that he has a lot of options you don't have to go for his s1 uh, actually i'm going to make an argument to where you don't really need it if you have certain light cones so yeah that's what we're going to be getting into today adventuring's light cone calculations but before we get into that i want to share with you guys something that completely changed the game for me when it comes to content creation and also as a gamer check out this amazing stand-up desk by our friends over at flexi spot not only does it look fantastic it also has a super sturdy frame that can handle all of your gaming setup it has a very sexy glass top and a very handy drawer for those quick credit card access for those summons and there's the best part, it's fully adjustable with customizable height presets. You can easily find the perfect position for you. This desk has totally changed the way I record my videos because recording standing up makes me feel way more relaxed. So everything just comes out more fluid. This desk also comes with two USB ports and one USB-C port. So you have easy access to charging your devices. It also comes with a child lock function for those of you that have kids. They have a ton of options from colors and styles and prices, so you are sure to find one that suits your needs. So if you're ready to take your setup to the next level, click the link in the description to get your hands on one of many flexi spot stand-up desks today. Trust me, once you try it, you'll never want to go back to a regular desk ever again. Our first things first is the baseline. For this particular baseline, we're running both defense sets, and I understand that Venturine has a multitude of ways of, of running him that don't include the defense sets. Actually, the defense sets, I, I, I would advise against it, but the reason that I did this is because it gives us the flexibility to see what we would do without running a defense boot. Because with a defense boot, we could actually put this on zero and throw in a defense boot right here, and uh, it would be actually more defense than just running the sets, which I assume is what most people are going to be doing. And if not, they're going to be rocking a, a defense chest, which is probably going to end up being the same thing. So, um, but for this particular test, we're running the 45% from both Relic and Planar sets. But again, like it, it doesn't have to be exactly like this for you. You can swap these two for whatever Relic sets have the best defense subs, and then you can make up with the, the main stat orb, rope, boots, or chest. As far as the rope, I'm not a particular fan of the energy recharge rope because he is a sustain. He doesn't need his ultimate to sustain. He doesn't need his ultimate. He only needs his ultimate to help him trigger an extra follow-up attack, but he's going to be triggering a lot of those anyway. So I don't think he really needs a energy recharge rope but i mean you could play him like that as well it's not a bad play style for him to have so his base defense 655 which is the exact same defense or 654 655 i think is what depart has and pretty much they have the exact same defense him and depart 397 is for the trend of universal marketplace light cone which is going to be our baseline and the reason for this is is because a lot of people have been wondering what this uh light cone will do to adventuring or do for adventuring at different uh superimposition levels because of Acheron. He gets 35% defense and traces. The chest is zero because I'm assuming we're running a crit chest. Boots isn't zero because I'm assuming I'm running a speed boot. And then we're going to have orb and rope for defense. The light cone, uh, the trend of universal marketplace gives us a 32% uh, defense at S5. And don't worry, these are all accounted for over here, S1 through S5, so don't worry about that. 25% in subs, which I think is very doable. I think most people have at least that amount in substats. The 36% in the tech is going to be the one that's most likely to happen. So out of his three instances of defense raise that are bound to happen, the 36% one is the highest percentage one, so I went with that one. Either way, if you get the 24%, you can always reroll to get the 36 or the 60. And then as I mentioned uh, earlier, the Raylix planar sets give us 45 percent extra defense he only gets 14.4 uh, percent imaginary damage so that's where the 14.4 uh, damage swords comes from he doesn't get anything else so this is what his damage formula kind of looks like his uh everything is adjusted down here for his skill trace shield ultimate follow-up attack and all of that stuff okay for those of you wondering i am taking into consideration his uh extra 15 percent crit damage uh, debuff that he inflicts with his ultimate as well trend of the universal marketplace this is going to be the baseline light cone for us if you compare the s1 to the s5 the difference is 40 uh, 40 hp or 40 shield in difference from s1 to s5 so the difference is actually not that huge the same thing goes for the trace shield this is the shield that he gets when he triggers his follow-up attack this is the amount of shield that you're going to get the difference is about 12 shield the, so the difference in shield with this particular light cone is not that big so it's not even important if you have it at s1 or s5 it's really not going to make that much of a difference and for the damage itself it's also the difference is about 500 damage in total and then like what 300 damage in the follow-up attack so it's really not even worth to consider for the <laughs> for the damage it's actually pretty piss poor but 
it does give him that extra 32%, which helps him uh, get to the 4,000 total defense, which is a really good uh, stopping point or a really good point for adventuring. So you can get that extra crit, which is actually not needed because my boy is mainly in uh, primarily a sustained character uh, first and foremost. Okay, Trend of Universal Marketplace, definitely not as surprising, but it does have the hidden perk that whenever he gets hit, he triggers an extra debuff that he can inflict on the enemy. So if for Akron teams, this light cone may trigger a little bit, even though even though it, it actually accounts for effect hit rate, you're still bound to trigger it because it has a 100% base chance of happening. So it's not like it's never going to trigger. All right, the second like we're going to talk about is day one in my new life. This one provides 24% defense instead of the 32, the trend of universal marketplace like home. But if you notice, it's actually a higher amount of shield. And the reason for that is that the day one in my new life has a higher base defense. This one has a 463 base defense and trend of universal uh, marketplace has a 397 base defense. And that makes the, uh, pretty much a lot of a difference. Well, not a lot. It's pretty much like a 40 uh damage uh, 40 shield difference and then about a 10 shield difference with a smaller trace shield the damage is also uh pretty much the same it's only like what 400 damage difference between day one and my new life and uh the trend of universal marketplace this one will make your team a lot more bulkier because it increases your type resistance for your entire team so this one gives you more bulk but this one gives you the uh actual debuff that you need for their Acheron teams if you want to go for that play style. So these two either or if you have one or these two at either in a super in position, it's actually going to be a really good decent option. That's a second light cone that works really well with uh adventuring. And as you can see it's over three it's only it's only three percent better when it comes to shielding and four percent better when it comes to damage. And it also makes people bulkier but the downside for this one is that it doesn't have the debuff that this one have for certain teams. Right, the next light cone we're going to be talking about is a gotcha light cone that's going to come out in Adventuring's banner is called Concert for Two uh, with a really great art right here. Uh, Concert for Two is pretty much his best four star option. It's, uh, unfortunately, it's a gotcha light cone, but even if you get one copy of it for Adventuring, it's actually pretty good. It gives you 32% at S5, 32% defense, and you deal 4% extra damage per character on the field that has a shield. This includes enemies. So if enemies have shield, now we have a bunch of enemies that have a little shield, those enemies also increase your damage. So baseline is going to be about anywhere from 16 to 32 percent extra damage between s5 uh, s1 and s5 but at s5 is an extra 32 percent damage bonus at a bare minimum because if your enemies have shield you get an extra eight percent it's four it's almost five percent better at shielding than trend of universal market and it's 36 percent better when it damages it's a lot like the damage comparison is a lot it's 4k damage um about 5k damage when you take into consideration the S5. So this concept for two light cone is actually really, really good. So if you're going for adventuring and you don't have like any of these other four star light cones, you may be like, it may be good for you to throw a few multis into the light cone banner. One, because you may get a signature light cone. Two, because if you get one, one copy of concept for two, you're already winning. It's already better than the other ones. Like you have 1299 shields. So these shields are probably the same. At S1, it's already better. If you can notice that S1, it's already better than the S5 of this and almost as good as the S5 of that. And it deals more damage. So yeah, even one copy of Concert for Two is more than enough for your adventuring. Really, really solid, really good light cone. The next light cone we're going to be talking about is it's called Destiny's Threadful Orbit. This is a free-to-play uh, memory uh, of chaos shop light cone that you can get from the memory of chaos shop. You can get all your copies from there. This one abandons all defense upgrades in, uh, and, and goes for uh, damage percent. It gives you uh, damage percentage based on your defense, and it also increases your effect res. So it's a solid light cone. It's not the best light cone uh, in terms of shielding, but even, even if you just abandon the whole getting extra defense with your uh, light cone, it's only 2% worse than trend of universal marketplace so you're not really losing a lot here so if you want to use this light cone you don't want to summon for concert for two and you don't have day, day one in my new life and you don't have trend this one's actually pretty decent you only lose about two percent in your shields but you gain almost 60 percent in damage because it, it all goes to damage it, it, this light cone abandons all shielding and then like not all of it only two percent but abandons like the shielding gained from light cone and also uh gives you a bunch of damage the reason it's so close is because again the base defense for this one is 397 and the base defense for this one is 463 so that base difference makes this much of a difference so overall free light cone you can get it right now if you want to 
um, and, and it works, gives you a little bit more damage if you're into that. All right, next up, we got Jappar's Light Cone Moment of Victory. This one's really, really nice. You get 24% defense. I think you get a little bit of effect hit rate, which you're really not going to be needing that much. And if you get hit, whenever you get hit, you're going to get an extra 24% defense for a total of 48% defense, which is a lot, coupled with the base stat that this Light Cone has, which is 595, if I remember correctly. This one has 595 which is higher than all the four stars, obviously. It's not higher than his own signature light cone, but it's still pretty high as base defense. And uh, compared to Trend of Universal, Marketplace is 12%, about 12% better in shielding. And if you get hit, 17% better in shielding. And then when you don't get hit, the damage is about 16% better because of the extra defense or 23% better when you do get hit. So Japar's light cone, if you have Japar's light cone and you're not using Japar, or you lost your standard banner 50-50 or pity or whatever, to Japar's light cone, you have no use for it, you're pulling for adventuring, this is the light cone you want to throw on him. Really, really solid light cone for him. Okay, and then we have his signature light cone, obviously his best light cone, better shielding, better damage. Uh, it is because this light cone has everything. It, it also has, it's pretty much all the other light cones put together. 40% defense, 40% um, defense on this light cone, plus the incredibly high 600, what is it? 662 base uh, defense that this light cone has. So overall, the highest base defense, the highest, uh, well, second highest, if you consider uh, Japart's uh, effect, but pretty much the highest base percentage defense increase and the highest flat defense increase as well gives you what this is uh the, this amount of damage it also increases on crit damage by 40 percent. it's just it, it gives you so much it gives adventuring so much but is it needed it's really not needed because to be fair adventuring it is it, he is a sustained character at the end of the day he does a little bit of damage right but he is a sustained character at the end of the day you don't really need him to be hitting 30 40 50k okay i mean if you want to build him for that that's on you but then this is going to be the light cone you're going to have to go for or just go to your parse light cone or go for destiny start for over light cone if you're looking for damage but as far as using him as a sustainer and he's a very very good sustainer um you don't need his signature light cone. The only thing that this light cone has that only trend of Universal Marketplace has is that it also inflicts a debuff. So for Acheron teams, this light cone is actually really, really nice. So if you're pulling event train for specifically Acheron teams, then you might want to consider uh, going for his signature light cone. Or if you can, if you already have a copy of trend of Universal Marketplace, then you can do that as well. But this is one of those characters that he doesn't really need his light cone pretty much at all. You can pretty much get away with any of these. The difference is not really that massive. Like 1440 shield versus 1300 shield, like 1250 shield is only 150 shield or 200 shield. That's nothing, you know, like, it, it, yeah, it can be the difference between dying and not dying. But at the end of the day, it's really, it's only 200 HP. Like, it's not really that much. And like I said, the damage on Adventuring, even though he is trying to be marketed as a uh, damage dealer, he's really not going to be putting out, like, crazy uh, damage numbers to the point where you're going to have, to, like, that you're going to over invest in the damage to make it work but yeah overall i'm very pleased with the amount of options that he has like if you have any of these light cones at any imposition it works uh he works it's just great like the difference is at most in shielding at most 20 percent, which is crazy and at the very least you lose two percent so like it's, it's really not that big of a deal his light cone is probably the least important part of Adventuring's kit, in my opinion, unless you're going for Acheron teams. If you're going for Acheron teams, then I can't say anything. I can't, uh, you're just going to have to need, either need Trent or you're going to need his own light cone. But yeah, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, see ya.